Hi friends, welcome to our channel Knowledge Rain. Today we are going to discuss about food analysis techniques or the techniques used for food analysis. Why we need this food analysis? Analysis will give information about the chemical composition, processing, quality control, contamination of food foodstuffs, ensuring com compliance with the food and trade laws. That is whether the food is maintaining the standard or to check the nutritional labeling that is whether the information provided on the uh, label is correct and for food inspection on grading to confirm the authenticity of the food or for food safety purpose and for quality control purpose for these things we need food analysis and there are a number of analytical techniques available to determine the property of a food material. It is necessary to select the most appropriate technique for specific application. That is, the selection depends on the property to be measured or the food to be analyzed or the reason for analysis. For the selection of food analysis will depend upon the property to be measured in that food or the type of food to be analyzed or the reason for carrying out this analysis. Keeping all in this mind, we have to select other analytical techniques. And the analysis is of we can classify the analysis into two types the classical analysis and the modern analysis techniques. What do you mean by this classical analysis? Classical analysis is also termed as wet chemical analysis. This is the basic analytical techniques. And this consists of analytical techniques that use no mechanical or electronic instrument other than balance. That is, in case of a classical analysis, uh, we we will not use any mechanical or electronic instruments other than a balance. And the classical analysis is of two types, volumetric and gravimetric. The volumetric analysis relies on critical volume measurement. Volumetric will depend upon critical volume measurement. And in case of gravimetry, it relies on critical mass measurement. Volumetric measurement is on volume measurement and gravimetry is on mass measurement. And uh, our modern techniques which include spectroscopic techniques, chromatographic techniques, uh, then fluorometry, then refractometry, then uh, nuclear magnetic renaissance etc. And now we will uh, see in detail one by one. Uh, first one is spectroscopic techniques. The spectroscopic techniques are based on the principle that molecules and atoms can interact with electromagnetic radiation. Or spectroscopy is the study of interaction between matter and electromagnetic radiation and the main principle behind the electromagnetic Spectroscopy is the Beer Lambert's law. What is this Beer Lambert's law? That is, Beer Lambert's law said that absorption is directly proportional to the concentration, and the absorption is also directly proportional to the path length. This is what is Beer Lambert's law. Spectroscopy is the study of the interaction between matter and the electromagnetic radiation uh, first technique under a spectroscopy is mass spectrometer a mass spectrometer generates multiple ions from the sample under investigation it then separates them according to their specific mass to charge ratio and then records the relative abundance of each ion type this is about mass spectrometer. Mass spectrometer generates multiple ions from sample under investigation and separates them according to their mass to charge ratio and records the relatively abundance of each ion type.
Now we are clear about the working of the mass spectrometer. Uh, now we can see where it is used. It is used in the field of glycomics and glycobiology. That is to know the structure of oligosaccharides which is more complex than protein. We can use this mass spectrometry and it can be also used in lipid analysis, then analysis of protein and peptides and also in analysis of oligonucleotides. Next one is infrared and Raman spectroscopy. The infrared spectrometer measures uh, the changes in molecular vibrations and produce high quality information about a sample composition and concentration. The FTIS that is the Fourier transform infrared spectroscopy is a technique used to obtain an infrared spectrum a spectrum of absorption or emission of a solid liquid or gas. That is it measures the changes in molecular vibrations produce a high quality information uh, about the sample composition and concentration. Both the infrared and Raman spectroscopy comes under the vibrational spectroscopy. Uh, and uh, in, in case of uh, infrared spectrometer it is uh, elastic in nature while in case of Raman spectroscopy it uses monochromatic radiation and also it is inelastic in nature inelastic phenomenon mm, then the while the Raman spectroscopy is a more sensitive in nature while infrared is most com widely used but it is not that much sensitive as Raman spectroscopy and the, both the infrared and Raman spectroscopy are complementary spectroscopic. The infrared spectroscopy can be used for qualitative analysis that is for compound identification as infrared spe spectrum of each molecule is unique mm, that, uh, so that we can identify a compound with this technique. Then in the infrared spectra or nature of a sample. Also, uh, we already said that for each molecule, the infrared spectra is a unique uh, so that we can identify the nature of a sample. That is, uh, for example, we can identify the presence of some groups, that is, example, cyano group in a sa given sample, etc. Then another uh, application is the identification of a vegetable oil or the verification of a food oil or the presence of trans fat in food oils. These are all the application of infrared spectroscopy. And uh, in case of infrared spectroscopy, we need to prepare the sample. But in case of Raman spectroscopy, there is no sample preparation. And uh, it's more sensitive than infrared spectroscopy. It is, uh, but, but the infrared spectroscopy is not that much sensitive, but it is selective in nature. And also, uh, there is one spectrometer that is spatially offset Raman spectroscopy and it can if which with this spectrometer we can identify a sample inside a container without the interference of the container we can with the Raman effect or the Raman spectroscopy we can uh, quantify or analyze the uh, component inside a container without the interference of the container it is a uh, uh, it's a most, most important application of Raman spectroscopy this one is atomic spectroscopy Atomic absorption spectroscopy is a spectroanalytical procedure for the quantitative determination of chemical elements using the absorption of optical radiation by free atoms in the gaseous state. That is, it quantifies the absorption of ground state atoms in gaseous state. This technique uses basically the principle that free atoms generated in an atomizer can absorb radiation at specific frequency. And the atomic spectroscopy is uh, used for the analysis of elemental impurities, heavy metals, contaminations or adulterations uh, in the foodstuffs. It is also used for the analysis of trace elements in foodstuffs. Next one is chromatographic techniques. Chromatography is an important 
biophysical technique that enables the separation, identification and purification of the components of a mixture for qualitative and quantitative analysis. That is, chromatography is based on the principle when molecules in mixture applied on the surface or into the solid and fluid stationary phase is separating from each other while moving with the aid of a mobile phase. If we, in, in chromatography technique, there are two phase, stationary phase and mobile phase. Uh, it is based on the principle when molecules in a mixture applied on the surface or into the solid and fluid stationary phase. If the molecules is applied on the stationary phase, we can see that it is separating from each other uh, while it is moving with the aid of the mobile phase. There are different types of chromatography which include column chromatography, ion exchange chromatography, uh, then gel permeation chromatography, affinity chromatography, paper chromatography, thin layer chromatography, gas chromatography, dye ligand chromatography, then hydrophobic interaction chromatography, pseudo affinity chromatography, then high pressure liquid chromatography. Based on our need, we have to select uh, the uh, technique. And uh, we already said that in, in a chromatography, it consists, consists of two phases, a stationary phase and a mobile phase. If the mobile phase, we use a gas, that, 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 is, uh, that technique is known as gas chromatography. And this gas chromatography, it is used to separate polar and non-polar compounds that are volatile in nature. If the samples are thermally unstable and non-volatile, we will use the technique liquid chromatography. And this gas chromatography, it is used to separate polar and non-polar compounds that are volatile in nature. And the typical application of gas chromatography is the quantitative or qualitative analysis of food composition and natural products, then food additives, flavor and aroma components, then a variety of transformation products and contaminants such as pesticides or fumigants, environmental pollutants, natural toxins, veterinary drugs and packaging material. Gas chromatography is a type of chromatography used in analytical chemistry for separating and analysis, analyzing compounds that can be vaporized without decomposition. And mainly this gas chromatography is used for testing the purity of a particular substance or separating different components from a mixture. And we already said that if the sample is non-volatile, for example, in case of protein, salt or polymer, then the best type of uh, um, technique is liquid chromatography. And here we are going to discuss about high performance liquid chromatography. High performance liquid chromatography or HPLC is used increasingly in the analysis of food samples to separate and detect additives and contaminants. This method breaks down complex mixtures into individual compounds which in turn are identified and quantified by suitable detectors and data handling systems. The HPLC analyzes thermally liable, non-volatile, highly polar compounds. And it is mainly uh, used to detect additives and contaminants in a mixture. And this, it, we can analyze the presence of citric acid in wine. Then anthocyanin profiling can be done uh, to detect juice adulteration. In this section, we have discussed about uh, food analysis techniques and why food analysis is done. Uh, then the classical food analysis method and modern methods which include spectrometry and chromatography and some of the types of spectrometry and chromatography techniques disc uh, discussed here. And, uh, 
with this section is not over with this video uh, next video we will cover fluorimetry polarimetry refractometry and other analytical techniques thank you for listening this video if you like this video give us a thumbs up please subscribe our channel share with your friends and leave your valuable comments